right. <laughs> Very excited for this. Mary Kay Cabot is joining us now on The Herd. Joy Taylor in for Colin Cowherd today. She's the Browns beat writer at Cleveland.com and the Plain Dealer. Uh, I am a huge fan of yours. I'll start with that. And I'm very excited to talk to you for multiple reasons. But full disclosure, I'm from Pittsburgh. So I'm a Pittsburgh girl. So I've had plenty of beefs with Cleveland. But I did buy into Baker Mayfield temporarily and then slowly started. He started to lose me. And the final straw for me was when you reported that Baker has differences that he needs to resolve with Kevin Stefanski. And uh, they need to happen soon if they're going to coexist next season. Also, some names on the radar will, will be on the radar if they don't, is what you reported. And he came back and said, clickbait, you and many other Cleveland local media continue to be drama-stirring reporters with no sources or fact. Don't put words in my mouth so you can put food on the table. I'm not your puppet. Now, uh, we are here today on March 18th, 2022, and you are correct and Baker is wrong. But before we even knew how this was all going to play out, I didn't appreciate the the extreme nature and, and way that he took to uh, address a report he disagreed with, which obviously has turned out to be wildly true. But what was your reaction when Baker tweeted that? Well, it was kind of like my son's when uh, my 25 year old son said, uh, Hey Baker, I've got news for you. My mom hasn't put food on the table in 25 years. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we had a little bit of a laugh about that. But, uh, but no, you know what? Baker's an emotional guy. It was an emotional time. Uh, he came off a very frustrating season, one in which he wanted to play really well and get an extension. And so, I, you know, I, I understand that sort of thing. And I also really understand uh, the 20-something mindset. So, it, you know, it didn't really, you know, rattle me too much. Um, but I was told subsequently that he actually did not read that column that I wrote, which had a lot of pro Baker stuff in it. I mean, I really delved deep into all of the extenuating circumstances that he had last year and the reasons why he probably should sit down with Kevin Stefanski and try to iron out their differences. I was trying to offer him a path forward where he could come back to the Cleveland Browns in his final season, have a really good year, and these guys could go on to live happily ever after. Uh, so I don't know, maybe if he would ever go back and read it at some point, he might see that it wasn't what he thought it was. That makes me even more frustrated about that situation. Not surprising at all, though. Uh, we're talking to Mary Kay Cabot. So what what was the breaking point for the Browns with Baker? Because obviously they did have the meeting with Deshaun Watson. So there had to be something where they said, OK, we're going to move forward. We're going to try and move forward with someone else. Well, I think they've said all along, and they really held to that, that they would look at all the available veteran quarterbacks in the draft, that they would, if they found some that they liked, they would kick the tires on them, they would explore some things, and they did just that. It shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody. Baker was 27th in the NFL last year with an 83.1 rating. He's heading into the final year of his contract. Why wouldn't you look into and kick the tires on Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, uh, and Deshaun Watson, whoever else uh, becomes available. So I don't think anybody can fault them for that. They made uh, no pretenses about not doing that. And uh, at the same time, they said, sure, we expect Baker to come back. We fully expect him to come back and be our starter next year. They didn't see any opportunities out there that they thought actually would come to fruition. So this is business. This is how business is done. Look at what Jimmy Garoppolo had to do last year. Jimmy had to go out play some football, and he took his team to the NFC Championship game. So I think that's the kind of way that Baker should approach this. Oh, I agree, but this isn't how Baker approaches things. So uh, I would I would disagree that this is how business is done because, you know, the Chiefs aren't doing that. The Rams aren't doing that. The Bills aren't doing that. You know, if you have a real franchise guy, you're not exploring other options on the market. And, you know, there was a report that – they wanted a, an adult in the room. I think it was Chris Mortensen that reported that. They wanted an adult in the room. And I believe that much of Baker's immaturity and actions helped to agitate a situation where if he had been acting like a franchise quarterback, they might not be considering moving on from him. How much of the, how much of the noise is playing a part in the Browns wanting to look elsewhere? 
Well, I think that's part of it. I think that uh, this regime does want a certain type of, of leadership, a certain type of player, uh, especially at the quarterback position. So I think that had something to do with it. But I also think that it's uh, driven a lot by by what you're seeing on the field. I mean, he just had the worst season of his career. And yes, some of that had to do with the fact that he had a fully torn labrum. But some of it was that, you know, he just didn't play well himself. And there were a lot of other things involved. Jarvis was hurt. Kareem Hunt was hurt. Jack Conklin missed most of the season. So he did have a lot on his plate for a young quarterback. Odell Beckham Jr., that whole saga really rattled him. So there were a lot of things that caused this thing to be bubbling under the surface. And I think that um, from Baker's standpoint, the Deshaun Watson visit was really just the straw that broke the camel's back. He has been disillusioned since I would say about midway through last season and, uh, you know, sort of feeling like he wasn't in the best position to win games. We're talking to Mary Kay Cabot, Brown's beat writer for cleveland.com, the plane dealer and analyst for WKYC TV, covered the Browns for a very long time. What's the fans pulse? On Baker right now, because as I mentioned, I'm, I'm a Pittsburgh girl. So sometimes Cleveland fans get upset with me, which is fine. Uh, we have lots of championships. So I just go look at those. But I do see a bit of a shift in the energy towards Baker Mayfield, which I think is, again, on him. But he's losing a little bit of the allure of the, the underdog tough guy thing that won over Cleveland fans to begin with. Well, I would say that this is just an incredibly polarizing topic. Half of the fan base still loves Baker Mayfield and wishes he, you know, we're going to be here and help them win games and and do all of the things that he promised to do when he was first drafted. And I think there is just a a, maybe 40, 50 percent of the fan base that is now like, okay, this is enough. Let's see what else could possibly be out there. And, uh, you know, a trade request, I think, does, you know, end up turning off a lot of people because you want to know that somebody is all in with your football team, regardless of what happens, regardless of business is conducted and they have to look around at other quarterbacks. So, uh, so I would say it's a divided fan base right now, but the important thing to note in all of this is I really do believe the Browns when they say they have no intentions of trading him. And I do think that Baker is going to have to come back and find a way to play football in first energy stadium in front of these fans for the Cleveland Browns. Whew, talking to Mary Kay Cabot. So you don't, they obviously denied the trade request. You don't think that they're going to try to bring in and say a Jimmy Garoppolo or someone else, a Jameis Winston or somebody else that's on the market? You know, never say never because we've all seen crazier things happen. But I do believe that right now their intent is to bring back Baker Mayfield, uh, to have him be the starting quarterback, even though he doesn't want that right now. Uh, I think that, you know, they feel he's under contract. He's their best option for right now. And they're not going to just trade him for the sake of trading him. If they find another situation for them that they feel is an upgrade, a clear cut upgrade for them at quarterback that will help them get to where they want to go next season, then they will do it. But just because he wants out right now, that's not happening. They've turned down other trade requests before. They are doing it again in this situation. And again, if something falls in their lap, something great falls in their lap that they can get their hands on, then they'll do it. If not, they expect him to be the guy. Woo. Well, we will we will watch and see what happens. It's been a chaotic march, that's for sure. And uh, I I can't tell you, I really admire your work a lot. And that that tweet, I was like, oh. I'm done, sir. I'm out. No, thank you. To put food on the table. I love that your son said that, though. (laughs) Yeah, we we had a little bit of fun with it. And uh, and of course, you know, my my kids, my family had, you know, a little bit of fun yesterday with, you know, some of the things we could, you know, I could have said, but (laughs) but didn't because uh, I always try to do the right thing. Got to take you have to take the high road in these kinds of situations. And I really don't have anything against Baker Mayfield. I hope he has a successful career. Yeah, I don't either, but I'm more petty. So I, <laughs> I'll take the low road <laughs> for you, Mary Kay. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, really appreciate it. You do amazing work and, uh, and keep it up. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having me. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.